But I came up with a great solution. Before I left, they um, went out and got corporate sponsorship. But the problem with that is now they have to work commercials into their calls. Hello, you reached the Coors Light crisis line. Mm, so you're angry because your husband left you for another woman. Well, hey, you can run him over with the new Dodge Ram truck. But when I first started on the crisis line, I was so keen, I was so naive, I just wanted to help. I remember I was talking to this one guy, he's like, yeah man, I'm really bummed out because I haven't been laid in six months. And like an idiot, I'm like, well, it's been a lot longer for me. And there's this beat of silence and I hear, what kind of a loser are you? <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, like I say, I, I see a psychiatrist, and I don't like that word. Um, I was on the way to my psychiatrist, and I was talking to this woman, and I said, I'm on my way to my therapist, because I didn't want to say psychiatrist in case she thought I was crazy, and then I realized how ridiculous that is. I mean, after all, she is my wife, <laughs> and she's the one that said I had to go in the first place. But I was seeing this psychiatrist, right, and she's like, David, I want you to have ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. And I'm like, but that stuff destroys your memory. And she's like, I don't remember hearing that. <laughs> and then I had another, when I was a teenager, I had this other um, psychologist say, oh, kid, just do your homework and everything will be fine. And I'm like, I didn't realize that doing algebra help with suicidal ideation. I've done algebra, and it actually brings on suicidal ideation. Yeah. And then, and, and then um, you know, I had another therapist who would just do this for the whole session. I could have got the same results by spending five bucks on a bobblehead. <laughs> and you know, therapists are so supportive. You know, they, they have to be for all the money they charge. And, um, but I'm at, well, what do I get if I'm on your sliding scale? Do you get a side? Do I get a special side? No, one side fits all. <laughs> and I was once on this medication. It cost like $1,000 a month. Um, you know, it's it really expensive. It cost $1,000 a month, and I had to snort it through a straw. <laughs> Anyhow, folks, your next comic. She works for Mahap. She does outreach in the community. Please give it up for Ariel Rowland. Well, thank you everybody for having me. This is one of my recoveries because ever since I've been in high school, I've always been around theater, acting, but I was teased and I was upset about it. When I became a peer advocate, I empowered myself. <laughs> I've been in psych hospitals a few times. The first time, I was really agitated and my parents brought me to this place, and I didn't know it was a psych hospital. I thought it was a hotel. <laughs> Can you imagine a psych ward hotel? You get chocolate on your pillow and a free massage? Yes, I trust your margaritas. They, they, they're the only drink that gives me a dry mouth. <laughs> then the hospital put me on something good. It was called a sirloin steak diet. <laughs> wow, that was good. It's the only medication that comes with mashed potatoes and cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in one hospital, it was like a boot camp. I didn't, I didn't mind the exercises, but it got a bit much, which 
We had to invade a foreign country every day. <laughs> then again, the country was Canada. <laughs> they were too polite to do anything about it. <laughs> One hospital, it was like Las Vegas. <laughs> they, they had all sorts of games like Paxos, poker, circles, slots, and so on roulette. <laughs> I, I ended up winning $300 and a new prescription. <laughs> The nest was my apartment, and Bozo was my second psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of psychiatrists show up to work in a red nose or clown boots. <laughs> when you're in recovery, you're supposed to exercise. Yesterday, I burnt off 1,200 calories just chasing my racing dogs. <laughs> and I want to get a lot of running, running off my mouth. <laughs> and at one point, I went to WJCS. And they gave me a blood, a mere test. But I didn't do so good. Not a lot of people fill a blood test. <laughs> or a psych evaluation. <laughs> people behaved a little strange in the psych ward. I didn't understand how they were talking to me. I'm thinking. They should buy them better, a better staff. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, I didn't know how to interact with people. Apparently, you're not supposed to ask what color are your underpants yeah. and you meet someone. <laughs> You need to get to know them first. <laughs> I used to work in retail. I worked for Kmart. I did the fitting room. I had to start out clothes that people didn't want. Which at Kmart was pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> but when people came out of the fitting room and said, these clothes don't work, I wanted to say, he didn't get my decision to work at Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> Money on. 
Oh. 